Good morning, I'm Russell with the Piano Outlet. Today is Sunday, and uh, I have undergone a project where I'm getting a uh, Discovia Mark IV ready for delivery, and I just wanted to talk about some of the components in a Discovia Mark IV, since I have them all, basically, uh, much of it on the table over here. And, uh, and the reason why is, is that uh, when these systems go out, you have to keep in mind they are approaching 10, 15 years old, and uh, when they get to their destination, maybe your house, the one thing that you don't want to have is any problems. So in order to uh, circumvent any issues the piano having later on, uh, there's a good idea to have some service done to these pianos. And uh, I want to talk about a little bit about what I do to them. And then also, uh, since I also have a Mark III system I'm working on, I have that on this table. I'm going to talk about some of the differences in the hardware. So if the camera comes around here, we'll be able to see what exactly is the difference between all the components and what the components consist of, okay? So, first of all, you have your solenoid rail. And if you notice, they're actually pretty similar, but this is a Mark III solenoid rail, and this is a Mark IV solenoid rail. And um, these, little, uh, these little pistons here are called solenoids, and uh, they occupy the inside of the piano. As a matter of fact, uh, this piano already had, this is the Mark IV over here, and you see the solenoids in here, and they correspond to the keys when the keys are put in, and that's what plays the piano. So, seeing it out here, this is a Mark III system, this is a Mark IV. One thing that you do notice, the Mark III system has a little taller solenoid. They're, they're a little bit different. I don't know really why, can't really say. But um, that's one difference between the Mark III and the Mark IV. The other component is the key sensors. So when you record on either one of these pianos, this, the sensors, this is the sensor that is below the keys and how this works, this sits underneath the keyboard and then in, underneath the keys, there are these little tabs and they go inside here and that's what um, gives you the three parameters of, of MIDI that's recorded into the computer, which is note on, note off, duration, which is how long the note stays down, and velocity, which is how fast that note is hit, uh, transmit to how loud the note is going to be when it plays back. But the Mark III system has sensors on the bottom and also on the top. This is the part that actually sits above the hammers. So let's come over here and I'll just talk about that. This is what, we, what they call the hammer sensor, which is in Mark III systems and some of the earlier Mark IV systems, in which case this sits here. And then these little copper tabs uh, go into the, to the, uh, the slots here. And there's a laser beam that goes through a laser beam or a light or whatever. And that uh, is what senses the hammers and the speed at which they go up and how long they stay up and all that. And then also under here is the key sensor. You can see part of it over here. Or if we come back, here you can see what they look like. This is the Mark III key sensor and Mark III hammer sensor. Now the newer Disclaviers, which I have here, only have one. They only have key sensor. And uh, instead of, um, instead of uh, copper uh, tabs, okay, you can actually see right here. This is a Mark III key sensor. This is a Mark IV key sensor. This sits underneath each and every key, and then would go up and down through here, and that's what would sense your keystrokes, okay? So, one of the reasons why I have all this pulled out, because a lot of people say, why you do all that work? Why don't you just send it out? Well, the reason is, is that a lot of people will leave these systems in their pianos um, and uh, maybe the piano's open for a period of years and years and years and they don't use it. Well, what happens is that these solenoids here, um, these are actually okay, these few, because you see if I put it in and let it bounce, you know that it's very free, which is the way it should be. 
let's see this one now. Yeah, there you go. Same thing with these here. This is the way that they should be. Now I've got one over here that you can see is stuck in the up position. That's because this has a little bit of dirt inside of it. It has to be cleaned. So we grab some Q-tips here. Usually I take uh, three Q-tips at a time and a little, little alcohol. I don't have the alcohol here, but we'll take this and we'll go up and down like this. And we'll take it and up, see? There she goes, now she's free. And you know, you could do that inside the piano. The problem is, is that um, when this is inside the piano, the back part of it, uh, the back part of the uh, solenoids, the back ones, are underneath where the dampers go, so you can't get to them. So you would only be able to do the front row, but you would not be able to do the back. And, uh, and so the whole idea is, is that you don't want any of these uh, solenoids sticking in the up position because then that would result in the key staying down. So if you ever see on a disc clavier or player piano the key stays down, it's because the solenoids are dirty and need to be cleaning, cleaned and this is the only way that you can clean it. And um, okay, so we, we, we talked about the key sensor, solenoid rail, the next thing is going to be this unit here which is very, very important. This is called the iOS. This is your computer center and this uh, has inside of it a hard drive, which is right over here. The problem with the hard drive is, hard drives are actually an older technology because you have something that's spinning almost like a record, but a lot faster. And uh, people will leave these uh, pianos on for maybe months at a time, maybe years at a time, because they can't get it on. And uh, what happens is that uh, these hard drives go bad. And if the hard drive goes bad, nothing will work on your piano and good luck in trying to find somebody who can replace it. Well, we replace every single Mark IV system with a new hard drive. And what that hard drive is for is it, it holds all your music in there, lots and lots of space for music, and also all the other functions for the piano. So if the hard drive goes bad, you're not gonna get the piano to work at all. And uh, it also has the um, CF card. This, this here is what enables you to be able to use your remote. This is the remote for the Mark IV incidentally and you don't really have to use this anymore with today's technology you can hook up uh, a router and use an iPad instead but you still need this to be able to access all the functions in the Mark IV and uh, to do some tests and update it and all that you need to have this and this will be this is able to communicate with your iOS center that's what this is called uh, which is basically just the computer uh, wirelessly and incidentally this is also where you would hook up your flat your um, router in order to be able to use your iPad wirelessly. Now, over here on the Mark III system, you have a similar unit here, except this is not a computer. This is more a power supply. And, um, and what happens with this is that this connects to all the functions of the piano, which is through this harness here. So as you see here, you have your silent system over here that hooks up to it. And it also hooks up to the speakers. These are the two speakers that are in a Mark III system. If you look at it, it's a five inch woofer with a, uh, uh, like a one inch tweeter. And the speaker sounds really nice, except it's non-powered because the power amp for both speakers are in here. So this has everything in here, whereas the Mark IV system, it doesn't because the Mark IV system has these speakers, which are by themselves powered. These are the MSP3s. What I like about these is that you have uh, you have adjustments for volume on here separately, and also you have adjustments for your bass and your treble, which is which is a nice feature. The other thing too is th that you're going to see that's different is the let me get my coffee out of here control box. This is your Mark III control box, which utilizes a floppy disk and a CD. Uh, and with this, you have an infrared remote control, and you'll be able to to um, play your music with it. The only drawback with this is, well, first, floppy disks. I mean, who uses those anymore? You don't really need it. Um, the other thing, these CD drives, another moving part that does tend to go bad. And um, <laughs> I have loads and loads of these uh, in in our shop back there that don't work because the CD drives don't work anymore. So the one thing nice about the um, let's see where I have. The Mark IV control box. Well, it's actually right here if you look at it on the piano. It has a CD drive here and has a floppy here. Actually, you're still not going to use the floppy drive, but you really don't need to use a CD drive anymore because 
if you load all the music into your hard drive on the Mark IV system, you could access all the music with an, with an iPad and you won't really even need to use the CD drive on it. Also, your um, switch for your uh, silent feature is right here where it says quiet. You press that and then when you come in here and look inside the piano, this is your uh, mute rail, incidentally. And you see how this works. <coughs> this is the mute rail here. So it goes up and it comes down. This is in the on position. This stops the hammers from hitting the strings. And this is the off position, which allows the hammer to hit the strings. And then you would plug your headphones up underneath here and uh, listen to your piano with the silent system in the on position. Now, uh, a couple of other things that we do when we have the um, when we have the uh, system taken apart, uh, we make sure that any parts, if you see we have all Yamaha parts, if there's anything that we need, any uh, wires that are missing. Um, we put new batteries inside these because these, uh, this is called a PRC100. Believe it or not, if you bought a Mark IV system and didn't get this, be prepared to pay about $1,000 for one of these because that's what they sell for these days. And you need them to, to uh, to basically set up the piano, do calibration and things like that. Not necessarily to play the piano, although you still can use one of these for that. But most of these, the batteries are always dead in them because people leave them in the chargers and you know how it is with uh, rechargeable batteries. But uh, one of the things that I do is that when we send a Mark IV system out, we make sure all the batteries are fresh. We make sure that you have the, the proper cards that go in here because a lot of times we'll get them in and they have the wrong type of cards that are in here. So these cannot match up. With the, um, with the iOS center. They, they, they try to connect and they can't. So we make sure that that's operational. And, um, and that's, uh, that's pretty much it. You know, it's, uh, you know, a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, I'm gonna get a Mark IV system and they, they'll buy it from, you know, out of somebody's house and it gets there and half of it's not working. And one of the, 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 the only drawback with the Mark IV system is that if one little thing isn't working, the whole piano's not gonna be working. So I hope this is a, uh, a handy overview of uh, the difference between the two systems, and I hope that uh, you guys learned something from it. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me, Piano Outlet, 954-803-3319, Coral Springs, Florida. Thank you for watching.